Nintendo is doing something that honestly often drives a lot of controversial conversations online, especially because people think that, you know, that it is our right to pirate video games. And look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do. As I have told several once this story broke online, I'm not your dad, all right? I'm not here to tell you what you can and cannot do with the choices you make in life. If you want to be a good old pirate out there, Go right ahead. I'm not here to tell you otherwise, right? Like You're free to do what you want, and I'm not going to sit here and judge you harshly for it. There are numerous reasons to pirate video games, whether it's due to lack of availability or uh, just living in countries where the games aren't even available or are priced at points that it's like a thousand bucks to buy a game. Yeah, that's a little insane. I understand all the various arguments, people wanting backups of their games. And yes, we obviously know emulators are legal. They're literally on the Apple App Store right now, uh, so long as they aren't using uh, encrypted keys or require encrypted keys to work, as we found out when Nintendo got the Yuzu emulator taken down. But here's the thing. Nintendo going after people who are helping create piracy has often been frowned on by people online, right? Like, why are you taking down these ROM websites? Why are you going after these people? Uh, why can't you just leave things alone? If you had better game availability, if you had better this, if you have better that, well, folks, hey, we wouldn't need to be doing this sort of stuff. And while I understand those sentiments, there are rare occasions that when Nintendo goes after people, well... They needed to. In fact, we should be applauding them once in a while for the things they did. As an example, Gary Bowser and the entire team executor thing, what were they doing that was so terrible, allowing us to modify and hack our switches? They were profiting off of it, selling devices and making money. Not only that, uh, Gary Bowser was busted red-handed, uh, hosting pirated files and distributing them, which, if you guys don't know, distribution of you know digital files like that to the public is against United States law. So you have to kind of play with fire there, and he did and got burned, and now we'll be paying Nintendo for the rest of his life. So why are we talking about this right now? Well, because Nintendo is suing a couple other people, and looks like they have a pretty open and shut case based on the evidence presented forward. But the thing is, during this entire case, Nintendo actually tried to be a nice guy. They gave one particular person a get out of jail free card, and they actually gave him two. And in both instances, he didn't do what he needed to do, and now Nintendo's bringing the law. And oh boy, this guy is very guilty, as is the other person. This is pretty wild stuff. We're going to go ahead and get into this report. Right before I do, I want to remind you, if you're enjoying stuff like this, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And let me know what your thoughts are on piracy down below. I'm sure it won't at all cause arguments in the comment section, uh, as it seems to do every single time. But here we go. We're going to go over here to this website uh, and look at this report here. It says Nintendo sues modded hardware and Switch Pirates moder moderator Archbox. So this is a Reddit subreddit here, Switch Pirates, etc. So very openly, you know, hey, we pirate games here at Switch Pirates. You know, maybe maybe don't uh, talk too much over there. But hey, uh, Nintendo has filed two lawsuits at a Washington federal court targeting individuals who allegedly facilitated Nintendo Switch piracy. The first lawsuit accuses modded hardware of violating the DMCA by selling mod chips and MIG devices. Remember the MIG switch? Getting that in a bit. As well as shipping modded consoles with pirated games. That's the big one. That is the... Yikes. <laughs> you cannot sell pirated games. Yeah, I, I know, guys, you can go on Amazon and find those billion devices doing it. A lot of those companies are located in China. And it, it, for those who know, it's really hard to chase down legally the stuff in China. It ain't so hard here in the United States. So if you're a US based person and you're selling pirated video games, you're in trouble. So. 
Interesting here. So the second complaint accuses Archbox, a moderator of the subreddit Switch Pirates, of facilitating piracy and operating various pirate shops. Nintendo was doing everything in its power to stop the public from playing pirated games on the Switch console, which is true. Uh, the Japanese gaming company won several lawsuits in recent history, shutting down websites that distributed pirated ROMs. Most notable, perhaps, was the criminal referral that resulted in the demise of the infamous hacking group Team Executor. The group released several jailbreak hacks for the gaming console in the past and was widely regarded as Nintendo's main nemesis. With the win against Team Executor, Nintendo hoped that the modding seed would fade into oblivion, but that's not what happened. In recent years, new tools and hardware solutions were released, requiring Nintendo to gas the enforcement pedal once again. For example, recently Nintendo went after various Switch piracy-related sites and services, including the Yuzu emulator, Lockpick, and the MIG Switch. Now, Nintendo versus modded hardware, the first case that's come up here. Nintendo also targeted modded hardware behind the scenes. The gaming giant reached out to its alleged owner and operator, Michigan resident Ryan Daly, who operates under the alias Homebrew Homie. In March, Nintendo threatened to sue him, after which both parties, this is the key part, both parties agreed that the allegedly unlawful activity, which included selling MIG devices and modded consoles, would stop. So Ryan Daly said, hey, thanks for reaching out, Nintendo. I'm going to stop doing this. Despite the agreement, modded hardware didn't close shop, and that led to further outreach by Nintendo. So Nintendo gave him one opportunity to stop. He said, sure, but then didn't do it. Nintendo thinking maybe, hey, it just might take some time for him to close some things down, reached out again and said, hey, what the hell is going on? Why aren't you close? So like Nintendo gave him multiple opportunities to not get sued. Yeah, here we are. So uh, anyways, so after that further outreach by Nintendo early this month, after which it still remained online, Daly said he was looking for a new lawyer, but Nintendo's patient had run out and followed up with a lawsuit. And the funny thing is, if you already made an agreement with Nintendo that you would take the stuff down, you just got to take it down. You don't really need to lawyer up. You're only lawyering up if you're planning on fighting it in court. So clearly, Daly had no intent of following the agreement he made with Nintendo and was always planning to fight it in court. But should he be fighting it in court? Well, let's get to that. In the complaint filed at a federal court in Seattle, Washington, Nintendo accuses modded hardware of copyright infringement and violating the DMCA by trafficking in circumvention devices, among other things. These unauthorized activities cause Nintendo substantial and irreparable harm, it argues, and the company wants to stop immediately. In addition, Nintendo hopes to recoup damages, which can potentially run into the millions of dollars. So, let's get into some of the stuff in here and what exactly they're accusing Ryan Daly of, and he definitely public-facing appears very guilty of we're able to confirm by going through uh you know web archives stuff like that to see his websites and realize he was actually doing this stuff quite publicly so the complaint mentions that modded hardware sells several pieces of hardware that circumvent its piracy protections uh again this is what team executor got busted for these include mod chips and the mig switch which the mig switch is a f interesting device merely because it's basically a flash cart and nintendo has won lawsuits against flash carts in the past many people widely debate if nintendo should have won those lawsuits but they did uh, never really won them in the U.S., but anyways, let's see, let's just get into this because that's not really the brux of what Nintendo's argument is. Anyway, so it says it's a memory card that allows you to play pirated copies of Nintendo games, Switch games, on authentic consoles. It also allows you to play your own personal copies on your console, not just pirated. Anyways, in addition to selling hardware hacks, the defendant also offered it. This is this is where Nintendo's got the smoking gun. If they can't nail them on the other two stuff, this is the worst offense. The defendant also offered in mail-in modding services. So he would sell services where you can mail your Switch in and get it modded, um, which is okay. Technically, might be legal. Might be legal to offer services to mod your system. Like, you want to mod a Switch Lite for an HDMI out port? Yeah, Nintendo probably has no problem with that. So I'm just going to point out that the actual service of modding the Switch is probably fine. However... These were reportedly loaded with pirated games, according to the complaint. And if you actually went to his website, he was advertising selling modded chips and, and, and offering to mod your Switch for a set fee, and it advertised as including games with it. That means he was selling pirated video games. <laughs> 
forget distributing pirated games, which is already illegal. It's extremely illegal to sell digital copies of games like that. You can't do that. You literally can't do that. So, oh boy. Um, Defendant not only offers the hardware firmware to create and play pirated games, he also provides his customers with copies of pirated Nintendo games. Typically, when a customer purchases a hatch console or the circumvention, uh, or the circumvention services, Defendant pre-installs on the console a portfolio of ready-to-play pirated games, including some of Nintendo's most popular titles like Super Mario, The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid games. Yeah, uh, his website definitely showed that's what he was doing. So... Uh, why the guy didn't just take Nintendo's legal offer, hey, just stop doing this and we'll leave you alone? Did did any lawyer, if you consulted a real lawyer, your, your excuse was you were trying to get a lawyer. I'm going to say right now, if you consulted an actual lawyer, they would have told you, get the F out. Help, like, just stop. Take Nintendo's offer, stop. But, you know, he didn't. Uh, the selling of alleged circumvention devices is a problem, Nintendo writes, as that's the only way for people to play pirated games. As such, Nintendo's piracy problem persists. Indeed, because pirated Nintendo Switch games cannot be used or created without a hacked console and related software and hardware, it is only because of products and services such as those sold by the defendant that illegal marketplaces distributing pirated games exist and thrive, Nintendo writes. Overall, Nintendo alleges that modded hardware and its alleged operator trafficked in circumvention devices by selling modded chips and MIG devices. That violates the DMCA, for which Nintendo demands damages. In addition, the gaming company seeks damages for direct and contributory copyright infringement, accusing the defendant of adding pirated games to consoles. These hardware devices and consoles should all be destroyed, which may or may not include consoles that customers have sent in. Uh, yeah, that, that's really the biggest part. Like what, Whether or not they can nail him on the MIG switch or the hardware mods, I don't know. You can nail him on selling copyrighted games. Um... Yeah, that's 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 not good. Uh, so here's the situation with Archbox. So in addition, in addition to the modded hardware lawsuit, Nintendo also filed a complaint in the Washington federal court against Arizona resident James Williams, known online as Archbox. According to Nintendo, Archbox is connected to several pirate shops, so it'll read like ROM websites, through which copies of unauthorized games are distributed. The defendant is the operator, overseer, and driving force behind several pirate shops, through which defendant has offered massive libraries of pirated Nintendo games. The complaint reads, in addition to running these pirate shops, the defendant allegedly help people to obtain and use circumvention hardware so they could play pirated games. This activity was allegedly boosted through the Switch Pirates subreddit where Archbox was a moderator. So basically, you know, the guy was running distribution websites, which yes, distributing ROMs like that is illegal in the United States. So that's already like a pretty open and shut case if Nintendo could prove he was running it. But some people might go, well, still, you know, legal or not, it's it's kind of a moral gray area. Well, Archbox went ahead and removed all uh, all doubt that he is living in a morally gray situation. Let's continue. Uh, defendant became a leading, if not primary, moderator of the Switch Pirates Reddit community, which helped grow to 190,000 members since 2019. Defendant has posted thousands of comments and messages to the Switch Pirates Reddit group. The complaint reads, Defendant's posts have included, by way of example, messages directing users to the pirate shops and offering technical advice and encouragement to other users about how to use pirate shops, how to download and install circumvention software, how to play pirated copies of, of games. Now here comes where we get rid of the moral the, the moral gray area. The pirate shops that Archbox is believed to be involved in include Jack in the Shop, Turtle in the Shop, and Nico Drive, which all shut down following the cease and desist letter in March. A fourth shop, Libera Shop, is still operational, presumably on Telegram, allegedly promoting and offering uh, thousands of pirated Nintendo games to the public. The allegations put forward in the complaint shouldn't have come as a surprise to Archbox, Nintendo suggests. He reportedly self-proclaimed pirate who is not willing to pay for legitimate games and also helps others join the pirate ranks. Here's, here's what it says. Defendant is well aware that his conduct is unlawful and infringes Nintendo's intellectual property rights. Indeed, defendant has bragged publicly that he is a pirate who, quote-unquote, isn't, look at this, look at this, isn't going to give Nintendo $50 for a game. So... You know the morally gray area where people are like, well, if I bought the games, what's it matter if I dumped it or downloaded it online? 
right? Like you feel like, oh, maybe I'm morally justified here that that I could definitely, uh, you know, have this copy of the game or give it to my friends who bought it. Yeah, no, this guy straight up is kind of scummy. He's essentially saying, nah, I will never give Nintendo money for their games, but I will pirate the shit out of them. Yeah, guy deserves what's coming to him. Uh, the complaint, assuming this is all true, of course, the complaint includes a wide variety of additional examples. Ultimately, it accuses Archbox of direct and contributory copyright infringement, various DMCA violations, including trafficking and circumvention devices, as well as breach of contract. Similar to modded Harbor complaint, the alleged damages are not specified, but can theoretically run into the millions of dollars. We've got links to the PDFs here. We'll provide links to those down below as well. But just to kind of show you, open it up, you can see this is definitely uh, the court cases, the one against Archbox. Um, it's including quotes here. You can see Discord messages. Reddit messages, websites, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, yet yeah, Nintendo has prevent has like provided all of the evidence it needs um, to make its case. Uh, both of these people look extremely, extremely guilty. This is all based on public filings here. Uh, these guys are screwed. So, what is my overall takeaway from all of this? Well, obviously, don't do stupid shit. Like I said at the very beginning. I'm not here to judge you if you pirate video games, but I will say that if you're doing it, uh, just some sage advice. Don't brag about it. Uh, don't talk about how you're unwilling to give Nintendo money because not only then you, you can lose the support of the few people that think it's fine to pirate as long as you buy copies of the games. Well, you're not even buying copies of the games. You're openly flaunting your stealing and you're running places that distribute the things you're stealing. So you got these ROMs from others already illegally, and then you're taking all those ROMs and putting them up for others to take. So it's it, it, you're just a like I, this is just some scummy behavior. And then the original guy, the modded hardware guy, uh, Mr. Daly. I don't understand what that guy was thinking. Uh, it's one thing to sell mod chip services. You know, it's another to uh, participate in selling the MIG switch, which you know may or may not be a legal device. That'll be played out in the courts. But it's a completely another thing to be selling modded switches that already include pirated software, that you are baking pirated software into your services. That means you are selling pirated video games, which is highly illegal. Uh, it's like selling bootleg copies of movies, which is technically also highly illegal. Uh, I, I don't know what this guy's doing, and Nintendo doesn't mess around. Uh, Nintendo gave the guy away. I think that's the thing that baffles me the most is for Mr. Daly... Nintendo gave you a get out of jail free card and they gave you two chances at that same get out of jail free card and you didn't take it and you thought Nintendo was what not serious not going to actually press charges no Nintendo's like fine we we gave you the opportunity to stop and not make this a big deal you didn't stop we're coming for you you're gonna owe us millions of dollars you might serve jail time we don't know but you're gonna be owing us millions of dollars and we are gonna be garnishing your wages the rest of the life hey we didn't want to do this but we have to because you, we found that you live in the united states and you are selling pirated video games i mean come on if, 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 if someone was doing that for PlayStation, if someone was doing that for Xbox, they would too. There's actually legal protections in place for companies where they have to pursue um, these legal means when they become aware of an illegal activity. So if Sony became aware of a user in the United States selling modded PlayStation 5s that included pirated software... Sony would legally have to take action or they could lose their copyright protections on their game. So like for everyone who gets mad at Nintendo about these lawsuits, when they become aware of this stuff, they have to take legal action. Now you might go, well, why does it always seem like Nintendo's the one doing it? We don't always hear about it from these other companies, although other companies have done it. Uh, and a lot of it's just because of how easy Nintendo's hardware is to hack, especially in the Switch generation. Um, you know, it's very easy to hack. It's way easier to emulate, as an example, than PlayStation 5. So Nintendo's tar uh, is just an easier target uh, for hackers. And because of that, uh, they're just involved in a lot more of these situations. Uh, there are modded PlayStation 5s out there. There are pirated PlayStation 5 games out there. But as far as I'm aware, there's no U.S. located person selling modded PS5s with pirated games included. I did some digging and wasn't able to find anywhere doing that right now, but I was able to find 
actually more than just this instance of people doing it online. So look, in the end, uh, they're participating in significantly illegal actions. And if you get busted, you get busted. And in the case of Archbox, man, I don't know what that guy's doing. Uh, running all those websites, okay, that's already like a big no-no, but hey, I'm running all these websites. I'm advertising I'm running all these websites, but I'm also going to advertise that I don't buy the games. I mean, you lose all support, I think, from anyone who thinks that it's cool to pirate games uh, if you're also saying you're not willing to buy the games anyways. So I'm not willing to buy the games. I just want to steal them. Yeah. Uh, the quotes are right there in the document. Nintendo's got a pretty open and shut case there. Uh, all of this stuff, by the way, has already been tried in court in the past and has proven to be illegal. Uh, there's not a lot of legal ground to stand on. Getting a lawyer at this point would just be to try to limit the damages or limit the jail time, but it's going to happen. You're going to be guilty. You might not be. You might not be found guilty of every single thing Nintendo's going after because they're throwing everything they can at you. But there are two very specific things: the selling of pirated games and the distribution of pirated games. Well mocking them and openly admitting you don't buy the games. Uh, so you're admitting that you illegally downloaded the copies in the first place just to redistribute. In the end, uh, these people are screwed. And uh, just don't be stupid, stupid. I guess that's my moral for today. And I'll thank Philip DeFranco for that line. I think he uses that a lot when he just comes across people just doing really stupid things that are very clearly obviously illegal and get busted for it and you're seeing some of these people champion and trying to defend them and screw Nintendo and it's like did you even did you even read what these people did uh there, there's some people that just kind of have it coming and these people had it coming anyways folks we'll let you know the results of all of this or whatever as it plays out I uh, might just end in settlements might go all the way to trial we don't know uh, but this is the sort of stuff that we'll update you on as the story needs updating probably by the end of the year there'll probably be some sort of resolution I don't know you guys are awesome I want to thank you so much for tuning in I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime and I'll catch you in the next video